Hello Fifth Gear Web people, I'm Graham from The Office and I've come to the Geneva Motor Show. It's a very glamorous affair and easy to get distracted by Swiss girls with furry um, skirts. But what we're going to try and do is show you just a few select cuts of the best cars you're going to drive over the next year and the best cars you're going to get all clammy about and really want to touch. Let's go. One of the cars that you might be able to drive this year is the new Polo. The standard car is apparently going to go on sale end of summer in the UK. They don't know the starting price yet, but it's about €12,000 in Europe. Sat inside it, nice and quality, feels a bit more kind of like the Mark VI Golf in its feel, slightly less expensive, but still good. The Blue Motion, whereas the previous one I think was 99 grams per kilometre of CO2, this one's got down to 87. That right there is BMW's new Roadster Coupe, which is interesting for three reasons. It's not called the Z5, it's the Z4. Don't know why. The last one was the Z4, one before that was the Z3. I think it was Z5 at the time. Secondly, it's got a folding electric metal roof, unlike the old one, which either had a soft top or a fixed roof. And thirdly, it's got BMW's new double clutch gearbox, which is in German so complicated to say that men have died trying. It's got 23 letters, but double clutch gearbox should be quite good. Right, some proper jizzy jazzy hyper supercar stuff now from this Aston 177, which is going to be the most expensive car on sale. This is going to be 1.4 million pounds. As V12, it's a monocoque chassis for the first time in an Aston, and they've just made it because they can. Really. It looks awesome. This one's fake, as you can tell by the plastic brake discs. Even if you can afford it, you can still only dream because there's only going to be 77 of them. They've all been sold. Last show of the series, Johnny drove Honda's new Insight, their hybrid car, and was kind of decided it was better than a Prius. But the problem with hybrids is you never quite see what's going on. So Toyota have cunningly built a Prius out of a telly and some perspex. And you can see there's an engine at the front, some batteries at the back, and some gaffer tape, insulated tape, and copper wire in the middle that makes it work. It's so good that there's a man been standing there for three minutes watching the tent. Right? That is technology gripping the human. He might be a mannequin. I've come to the Porsche stand for two reasons. First of which was to see the KN diesel, Porsche's first ever diesel. I've seen that. It's blue, it's a diesel, and it gets to six in about eight seconds. Say any more than that. Secondly, I wanted to see a Panamera, but I've just asked a nice Porsche lady if I can. She said it's not here. All there is uh, in trace of the Panamera is a sign that says Panamera, die for dimension, which is exactly what the designers should probably do quite soon. Not the best looking car they've ever made. Right, we're just running out of time at the motor show, there's only about half an hour left, but I'm gonna be able to show you two final dream cars from the British stable. The first one, 200 EX from Rolls-Royce. It's a smaller version of the Phantom. Imagine it as a bridge between maybe a BMW 7 Series and a Rolls-Royce Phantom. It fits in the middle. It's still got suicide side doors, minimalist, cool Rolls-Royce interior, but it's a lot cheaper and a little bit smaller, so maybe more people afford it. It's like their mainstream volume seller in Rolls-Royce's terms, anyway. It looks really smart. Four minutes left in the show, and I've just found time to sit in the Bentley Continental Super Sports. Their new model that runs on E85 ethanol, so technically it's environmentally friendly, so we can all buy them on the same planet. 621 horsepower, brilliant. 204 miles an hour top speed, brilliant. 0 to 62 miles an hour, 3.7, brilliant. And about 800 newton meters of torque. In white, with this interior, perfect way to end the Geneva Motor Show.